Okay, great. So I think like decision making is one of the most important topics of all, like of all, right? One of the most important topics because mm -hmm. I believe that decisions are your destiny. So I think it's really, really important that you focus on like decision making. One of the reasons why people overthink is because they doubt themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I will make a decision and I'll go, right, I'm going to do this, right? And then I will start to do that. And then my brain goes, you sure you want to do this? You sure this is the thing you want to do? Like, shouldn't you rather be? And that stuff, if I then start to listen to it, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm gone. Right. And I think that what I would advise is with a lot of decision making is obviously decision making generally should be objective based. What am I trying to achieve? What's my objective? What's the quickest, easiest route to kind of get to my objective? That's what I'm going to choose. Right. Then what I would say is that, you know, part of decision making and focusing and all this stuff is actually closing the door to everything else, right? So when, when I actually focus, focus actually means that I am saying no to everything else. And, and this is the point that when you have decided you're going to go down this route, then it should just be, I'm going to go down this route, right? So for example, like, you know, the whole thing around uh, the Prophet and Uhud, and, you know, they said, should we go out? Should we not go out? All this stuff, the Prophet puts on his armor and then the Sahaba come to him and say, look, you know, the kids, they were just saying this, maybe we shouldn't do this. Prophet said, no, the armor is on, that's it. It's done now. There's, there's no, should we do this? Let's not do this. Let's, let's get off the horse. Let's take the armor off. Let's put it back on later. No, no, no. The decision is made, it's done, right? And I think that part of this is doing exactly that, where you say to yourself that, look, this is not up for discussion. This is not up for discussion. By the way, it will be up for discussion in two months time when I review my quarter, but right now it's not for discussion. Right now I'm just going to do what needs to be done. And part of the problem with overthinking and 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 uh, these thoughts and stuff is that we're spending time up here when we should be spending time in the action, right? So for example, let's take this. And I'm really, really happy about the way you phrase your questions because you're giving me very specific and you're answering the questions I'm going to ask you anyway, right? So when you're talking about something like reading Quran and all of this, what I would do is I'm saying there's nothing wrong with you iterating and improving. So for example, I might start with reading only one ayah of Quran a day because I've never read Quran. And I'm like, I'm going to read one ayah a day. That's all I can give. But I'm going to do it sincerely for the sake of Allah. And I'm going to do it regularly. And maybe something comes out of it. Then later, after reading one ayah a day, I might start saying, you know what? I want to start reading three ayahs a day. So I might iterate and go, you know what? I'm going to read three ayahs a day. So then I'll start reading three ayahs a day. Then I might say, you know what? I think it's more beneficial if I just read the Arabic first three eyes and then I'm going to read the English three eyes. I'm going to do that. So there's nothing wrong with iterating. There's nothing wrong with changing. But when it's going to affect your performance in the moment right now, that's when it's an issue, right? So really we should have points at which we make decisions. And between those points, we just stick to what needs to be done. Does that make sense? So when it comes to the Quran thing, for example, like at some point you need to decide, okay, I want to read three ayahs, five ayahs, one ayah, ten ayah, whatever of Quran, and I'm going to do it this way. Right? And you might say to myself, I'm going to try this for two weeks, and after two weeks, I'm going to change it to something better if it needs changing. Right? And so then what you do is you basically get into it and you start doing it. And while you're doing it, your brain goes, no, you know what, you should do this, you should do this. Listen, that's fine. Just hold that thought till two weeks' time. And then we're going to do it. Meanwhile, let me get back to Quran, right? And you just do it. And then when the two week point comes, then it's like, okay, what did you learn? What did you think? Yeah, you know what? Maybe I should do this. Maybe Okay. So now what I'm going to do is for two weeks more, I'm going to do this instead, right? Or maybe for five days, I'm going to do this. I'm going to see how it works. And then I'm going to kind of change it and iterate it and stuff. But the more important thing is that you're actually doing it. The more important thing is that you actually link to the Quran every day. So don't get too bogged down in the detail. Because remember what the, the key is. The key is to be connected to the Qur'an. The key is to be connected to Allah. And so, yes, there are certain ways of you connecting the Qur'an, which will be easier for you, which will be better for you. You're going to go towards those things. And if you find something is detrimental, it's not connecting you, then you stay away from that. But I would do it in, in blocks. And this is my block for doing this. This is my block for testing this. And if that works, that's it. Off you go. What do you think about that? Like, give me some feedback. What, what do you think? Could that work for you? And I'm saying you, you yeah. do that with all your decisions. All of your decisions that might lead to you being unsure, you just set a date. So when you now make a decision today, you could say to yourself, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to buy this speaker. Okay. And I'm going to use this speaker for, for the things I need it for. Now, if I change my mind, you know, in, in six months time, I'll review it again. And if it's not good enough, I'll buy another one, whatever, whatever. Right? 
right? Mm -hmm. And then you might just go and use the speaker and see how it works. And if you get any doubts, I'm like, look, yeah, in five months' time, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it, right? Of course, if there's something drastic, like this has started to blow up my house or something, I'm going to get rid of it, right? But generally, your mind should be for all of these decisions that, look, the review point is my quarterly. So every quarter, you might sit down and do your planning or whatever. And so at that point, it's like, look, when I, what I'm going to do is quarterly time, I'm going to do this. So this is more of a technique to dampen the voice in your head and dampen the doubts to the point where you're like, yes, you can have the doubts. Yes, I can hear it. Yes, it might be a good suggestion. Listen, I'm not going to do nothing about it right now. And I'm saying after a while, by the way, your mind starts to realize that you're not going to do anything with it anymore. Right. And then it kind of itself, it will go down because once the doubts have been like, you know, pushed to the side so much, they don't, they don't come up so much. And this is why one of the brothers was asking me recently about, you know, like, how the program helped them and this and that. And I'm saying that a lot of the doubts and fears and things I used to have about myself, I can't even remember them now, alhamdulillah, right? Because once you dampen them down, it's like your nafs. Once you control certain things, after a while, it becomes a non-issue. Like, you know, things like music and these things that was such a hold on me. Like, it's not one of those things where every day now I'm like, oh my God, I can't listen to music. Well, it's not like that anymore, right? And this is what it's like with a lot of stuff. Same with your doubts, same with the thing. But just realize when I made a decision, you know, I'm a person of integrity. I made a decision. I'm not going to change that. I'm going to stick to that until this day. And if you start sticking to it and going, that's my review date, you start to train yourself to be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one, one of the things that I would do is like, I would, I would attach certain things to certain things. So I'll give you an example. Like when I would, like when I was in the routine when my kids were going to uh, uh, an Islamic school and stuff, I would attach things to going there. So every day on the way to school, like I would listen to Quran, not recite it like myself or understand. I would just like listen to Quran right? Actually on the drive there or the drive to work or whatever. So like, I know I've got to listen to Quran. So sometimes I would recite every day, but I don't hear Quran. And I think there's a benefit of hearing other people reciting Quran and all of that as well. So what I did is I anchored it to going to school. So it could be like, whenever you drive to work, you're just like, that's the time when I'm going to listen to Quran, for example, right? So it might be that you try and split up some of the things you're doing. I'll give you another example, right? Like one of the things that I really want to do is to see it and understanding Quran on a deeper level. But I don't actually proactively look at tafsir, but I'm part of this brother who does a daily tafsir snippet on WhatsApp, right? So every single day, like he will send a tafsir. And now, like, I don't know, um, I can't remember where, 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 basically like he started me off. I started with him right at the start. And when we started, obviously we started at the start of the Quran and now we are on day 2000, is it day 2452? Something like that, right? Um, and we're like very, we're like in Surah Ali Imran now. So even through just that one WhatsApp message every day, it might not be much, but I'm getting tafsir every single day and like exactly what I need from a tafsir perspective, right? It's tiny, but in the eyes of Allah, it might not be tiny because I'm doing it regularly, I'm doing like that. So a lot of this could be just setting up different systems that will do it rather than you. Okay, now I'm going to sit down for an hour and I'm going to do 10 minutes of listening and I'm going to do 15 minutes of tafsir. I'm going to do like, rather than doing that, you might just find it's better to find different systems. And then of course, there might be certain times where you need to give time. So you might just say, okay, after every Dhuhr prayer, I'm going to read some Quran, just recitation, right? And then uh, when I'm doing morning routine, I'll just do some understanding or do recitation in the morning and do like that. So you can kind of uh, mix it up and test and trial different things and all of this stuff and uh, and and definitely i would go with uh, quality rather than quantity uh, in those things as well